Welcome to the introduction to web services on the mainframe. My name is Philipp Brune from Neu-Ulm University of Applied Sciences. Before we look on how web services are used and implemented on uh, the mainframe or, and on ZOS, um, first let us have a look on what is a web service in general. We all have an idea of what a service is. A service is, um, in general, in everyday life, is something where you ask a person or an institution or a company to do something for you, where you just specify, okay, I want to have something done and there's a price for it and um, you do not have to know how the company is doing that. For example, cleaning a house would be a service. You just specify, okay, please clean the house two times a week and then uh, you expect that the house is clean and you do not have to know which kind of cleaning material, for example, um, the person uses or um, how the person actually is doing that. You just uh, specify a quality of service and, and for the result and, and you pay for it. And that's basically similar what we um, think of services in software engineering. So the concept of service in software engineering means that we have a software component that specifies a certain uh, scope and a certain functionality and offers this for other components to use it. Um, but the other components only have to know the interface and they only have to know how to call the service and they can um, call the service being completely agnostic on how the service is actually doing that. The service just needs to specify how it is invoked and actually what it does, so the, the functionality and of course maybe quality attributes like um, availability and pricing and so on. So um, a software component that is encapsulated, that is self-contained and that can be used from other uh, program or other components without knowing anything about the internal implementation and without knowing um, uh, how, how the service is actually operated. And um, usually we, a service should be a sort of a meaningful, encapsulated and self-contained business functionality um, that has a well-defined external interface and that can be called in a sort of platform neutral way. Of course, such kind of service can be implemented with a lot of different technologies and frameworks and, and languages and not all services are necessarily web services. So this is more like an architectural paradigm. But many services are web services. So we talk of a web service when we have a service type of component that is basically invoked or called using HTTP. HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is the web the basis of the World Wide Web. It's the protocol that is used uh, to read and, and write HTML pages. And um, it's very common, everyone uses it every day when we browse the internet. So um, when HTTP is used to communicate between a caller and the service component, then it's basically a web service. And usually um, web services um, uh, are invoked by, by other programs. So the idea is not to have a web page that is read by an end user and browsed by, by some web browser, but it's um, using HTTP for communication between parts of an application, between components and, and um, program to program communication. And this also, uh, of course, means that the data that a web service sends is usually not HTML or something, but it's something else, for example, JSON or XML, which are typically text-based formats for um, pro data exchange between programs. So this is the general idea of a web service. In the recent years, there is also a, a, a new word around that is, uh, is microservices. Uh, which extends this pattern or this concept of a service a little bit um, to having <coughs> services um, that are not only a software component but a, a microservice is a service component that is developed, maintained and run by one integral team of developers and operators and they have the complete responsibility for providing the service and uh, the services should not to be too big. So microservice means that um, a team that can be fed with two pizzas, the two pizza team is able to um, operate, maintain and co uh, completely provide the service 
Um, uh, so it's a rather small thing and the users of such a service do not know or do not have to know anything about languages and tools it used inside. So microservice extends the idea um, in, an, in an agile manner to operation as well. To better understand the concept of a web service, at this slide we see the conceptual architecture of, of every web service um, system or web service software. So uh, that we have usually a client, we can have many clients. Clients are programs, use the service to consume its functionality. And we have the web service implementation. And since the, the communication is handled using HTTP protocol, of course, um, the service needs to run inside some kind of web server, web application server. And <coughs> inside the web application server, we have um, uh, sort of the, the service container functionality, which actually implements the uh, uh, environment for, for writing services. And um, inside that, we have then the service implementations. If we would do this with Java and Java EE, for example, there's a standard called uh, JAX RS or JAX WS. Um, for implementing web services and uh, the web service could be for example an enterprise Java bean that is exposed its interface as um, a web service interface. And um, the client now can send calls to the server um, via HTTP for example using XML or JSON notation depending on the technology and, and the frameworks used. For implementing web services there are different um, standards or they have evolved to different standards and, and concepts. And I tried to just outline the most important ones so we have all the words um, that are frequently used in the context of, of implementing web services on the mainframe and on other platforms of course. So <coughs> the basic distinction of web service are or is um, between RESTful web services and SOAP web services. SOAP is a standard, a specification that um, describes uh, the way how a web service is invoked. And SOAP is a sort of heavyweight protocol specifying a set of XML um, document types that uh, form the request and response messages to call and receive the results of the service. <coughs> and um, uh, originally SOAP stood for a simple object access protocol but it's neither object oriented nor simple so the acronym resolution officially was dropped and now we just call it SOAP. And um, the other type of web service uh, which is very common and very popular in, in the internet world, in the web world are REST or RESTful web services. REST is an acronym for representational state transfer. And it is basically the idea, it's not, it's not a standard, it's not a specification, it's more like a paradigm, a concept. And uh, <coughs> basically the idea is to map the different operations that a web service can offer or offers and can be executed um, to the HTTP request types, so get, put, messages and so on, and the corresponding URI, uh, URI um, uh, elements that are used to call the service. So, um, there's a sort of a scheme that is typically used to uh, transform a, a call into a web request. Since it's not standardized, it's not um, completely the same for all implementations, so it's more like an idea that you have to know and understand, but uh, and it, it, the details always depend on the actual service that you use, but it's very, very lightweight and very common to be used in the internet. And uh, so most web services today are RESTful web services, SOAP is more used in corporate environments, in enterprise technology, coupling, for example, a different business application to another. In the context of SOAP, a set of additional standards um, has been specified. And um, uh, one uh, important one, for example, is the Web Service Description Language, WSDL, which is uh, non describing the interface. So SOAP, the SOAP standard describes the messages to call, actually call the service, but uh, WSDL describes um, how the service should be called. So it's a machine readable specification and it can be used, for example, to create clients to um, call the service. And the next one is the universal description, discovery and integration. It describes a sort of a, a directory service for services. So you can think of a sort of a, a phone book where you can look up your service. 
roughly. And um, uh, there are products that sort of provide a service registry where uh, services can be searched and retrieved and the information, for example, the WSDL can be stored. And then there's a set of for further standards, uh, WS.star standards, um, like WS security, WS trust, which mainly cover certain aspects like, for example, security, authentication and things like that. They all relate to SOAP for REST. They're, um, they are not standards in a way, so it's more like a an, an paradigm or an idea. But in general, you always have to distinguish between RESTful or SOAP-based web services. If we move on, how web services, or what, what, what the role of web services on the mainframe is, then <coughs> web services on the mainframe are now very, very common and used for um, opening up the, the traditional, for example, COBOL or transactional programs uh, to be used by, um, by other applications, non-mainframe applications or web pages and so on, mobile clients. And in general, web services um, on, the, on, on ZOS uh, or also on Linux can be implemented on the mainframe um, using Java EE or now called Jakarta EE since it has been released to the open source a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And um, regarding uh, the Jakarta EE specification, there are different uh, application servers available on ZOS. IBM provides the IBM WebSphere. Now there's the IBM Liberty profile, um, uh, which is a sort of a more lightweight uh, uh, component on ZOS to implement um, uh, Java EE uh, applications, services, and so on. And on Linux, of course, you have the, all the Java EE open source and commercial tools like Tomcat and Wildfly and JBoss and um, uh, Open Liberty, Geronimo and so on uh, available to implement uh, web service as well. We can either use uh, SOAP here or RESTful web services. Both is possible using Java. Um, for both there are standards for uh, writing um, uh, SOAP-based web services, there is uh, JAX-WS um, API, which is part of the Java E specification. And there you can easily turn every enterprise Java bean, every stateless enterprise Java bean into a SOAP-based web service just by putting some annotations and then the server automatically opens it as a, uh, um, a SOAP-based web service and it can be called. Very easy. Basically, you just say, okay, please be a web service and then the EGB is, is reachable. And, um, the same is basically true for, for RESTful web services. There's also a standard API JAX RS, which implements RESTful web services and allows also to expose session beans, for example, EGBs in uh, form of a web service. So <coughs> the classical structure is running a Java E application server with some EGBs, for example, having the clients calling our mainframe here using HTTP or the network. And then the EGB, again, would invoke SIX, uh, for example, or other transaction processing monitor internally to call the, the traditional COBOL program. That COBOL program might access the database, does something, sends back the data, and the front end sends it back to the client. So that was the traditional way of opening uh, COBOL programs. Um, now there's an alternative uh, for some time. There's a product called Z, uh, ZOS Connect that is uh, an IBM product. Um, that can just be installed and opens up all the functions and six transactions uh, of, on ZOS as um, RESTful web services. And this is a direct implementation. You don't need a separate application server for that, for example. And both allow to call, for example, transactional six programs, COBOL programs, uh, running in six like, like here on the ZOS on mainframe um, using uh, uh, web services. And the, the important part is here, we have the traditional transactions, which, um, for example, have, or in the past, had these um, map-based user interfaces. And um, now we want to have these programs being part of modern systems, modern architectures. And with using these web service front ends, we can turn the traditional COBOL programs in web uh, service-oriented architectures or being part of a service-oriented architecture, which is um, a good way to, um, to modernize and to uh, preserve the value that is, um, uh, or that lies in the, in the 
COBOL programs. Thank you very much.